Hi guys, thank you so much for joining us online this weekend. Today I'm closing our message series, The Door. I hope that you have been blessed and you have learned some very practical things in regards to opening doors, especially in the season of pandemic. I believe the door means so many things to so many people. In fact, I believe that in all our prayers today, we seem to have the word door somewhere uh, put into our prayers. As we come to our final message, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever been locked out of your house? Was it a time that you have been locked out of your house or your office? How did you feel? What did you do? Who did you call for help? Obviously, a locksmith. It is amazing a locksmith can make a key even without an original. A locksmith can do wonders. They can open the door without a key. Today, I want us to know that there are many different kinds of doors in our life, not a physical door. There are relationship doors. There are financial doors. There are so many kinds of doors that we all are facing or even standing in front of us. And today, if you are facing a door that is locked or is closed, I want to share with you that there is one person, not your locksmith, but there is one person who can unlock that door for you. I want to read from a passage taken from the book of Revelation in the Bible, chapter 3, uh, verse 7 and 8. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write the words of the Holy One, the True One who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Before we talk about or ask the question, what is this open door or a closed door that this passage referred to? Jesus here is speaking to us that I have the key of David. There is some sort or some kind of key, a magical key to every closed or every locked door that you are facing and encountering today. Today, in this passage, I want to share with you a practical point. The first point is that God has opened the door for you in heaven. According to this passage, this incident uh, happens in heaven. Now, the Bible tells us that heaven is a place of perfection. And most importantly, heaven is a place of provision. Now, also, heaven is a place where you have the presence of God in person the full measure of His presence, not only His hands, but you get to see His face. As if were, heaven is where God dwells, where He lives. The scripture here tells us that Jesus has opened up heaven, the door to heaven He has unlocked for you and I. A place of perfection, a place of provision, a storehouse, as it were. In this story, in the book of Revelation, John himself, he was on earth and he was invited into heaven, the presence of God, obviously, temporarily, not permanently at that point in time. And he saw the presence, the fullness, the person of God. He saw perfection all around him like never before. And you must remember, John was coming from the earth, a place of imperfection, a place where there is a lack of provision. And now he is in the presence of God and he sees everything so perfectly. Today, the Bible tells us that heaven is open before us. Do you know that in the incident of uh, Stephen, uh, before his life was taken, in the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 55 and 56, the scripture read like this, but he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens open 
the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Here, a man who is standing on earth, he looked up just before his life was taken away from him and he saw the door of heaven open. And the first thing or the first person that he saw was God himself, Jesus, in his fullness, the person of God, the presence of God, and ultimately the perfection and the provision that comes with it. Today, I want you to know, because Jesus came into this world 2,000 years ago, heaven now is open. If only you have a spiritual eye to see, to look up to heaven, you see heaven is open above you. Jesus has come to open up heaven. The door to heaven, the door of heaven has always been closed to man until Jesus came 2,000 years ago and he took the key of David and he opened that door for you and I. My friends, today I want you to know that whatever door that you are facing that is closed or locked before you, the Bible tells us that God has opened His door of provision, His door of perfection above us. And if only that you will look up and look to Him, heaven is more than just a place, but the person, God Himself. I want to encourage you, there is hope. Remember the question I asked you at the beginning of our message? When you, when you are being locked out of your house, who would you call? What would you do? There is a person that you can call out right now. There is something that you can do because of what He has done. Today, you can turn to Jesus. He is the spiritual locksmith that has the keys of David. He can open that door for you. The second point I want to share with us is that God has opened up heaven on earth. Heaven is open, yes, but heaven is open here on earth. It is important that we must understand that heaven is not only open for us the day we leave this world, meaning the day we die, but also heaven is open for us where heaven is coming to earth, invading earth. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who are in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come heaven come your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven there is an alignment heaven aligning itself with earth aligning itself with heaven there is an alignment now earth once again is a reflection of heaven which has always been god's plan and his intention from the very beginning of creation in the book of Genesis, is spelled out very clearly. In the beginning, He created the heavens and the earth, and subsequently, towards the end, on the last day, He created men and women, Adam and Eve, in His image. Just as Adam and Eve reflected the image of God, they resemble God, they reflect God, they are a child of God, when you see Adam and Eve, you see who the Father is, God Himself. And in that same way, when He created the earth, a physical realm, is meant to reflect the spiritual realm, heaven itself. So here, as you have understood what I've just said, now heaven is open to men because Jesus has opened the door to heaven with the keys of David. Now heaven has come on earth. There is an open heaven here on earth for you and for me. This should change the way we perceive God and the way we view our lives. The problems and the pains that you're seeing today and you're experiencing right now, it could be the pandemic. Whatever that you're facing, the closed door and the locked door before you right now, heaven is invading earth. God is bringing solutions to your problems. As I've always said, because of Jesus, whatever problem that you're facing today, there is a promise to go with it. Whatever obstacles that you are facing right now, there is an opportunity behind the obstacles. In the crisis that you face, you will always find a person, and that person is Jesus Christ 
himself. What the enemy intend to destroy you, God have used that to develop you. Because heaven has come on earth, we all have a reason to have hope, to have faith in God. Every one of us have a reason to continue to love and not give up in whatever relationship that you are facing that is breaking down. This should change the way we respond to our pain, responding to our problems, the people in our lives, and the pandemic. Jesus has put before us an open heaven. Jesus has put before us, above us, an open heaven. This simply means that your life and my life is full of opportunities. Obstacles, yes, but behind the obstacles, opportunities to do the will of God, to seek the face of God, to shine our light, God's light in this dark world. The book of Revelation, the same book that we've been reading, interestingly closes with Revelation chapter 22, verse 9. Let me read this. Now, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But the angel said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of his book. Worship God. Worship God. Here, John is in heaven, in a place of perfection, with provision, in the presence of God, and seeing the person of God. Guess what he did? He literally bow down to worship the angel who is only a messenger. And the angel stopped John. The angel instead advised, instructed John to say, worship God. Why do I pick on this? The, the last part of the book of Revelation as we talk about an open door in heaven and heaven invading earth, here on earth. Why? Because what should be our response? As God opened the door, as God is the locksmith, our response to an open door in life is to come to God and worship Him. In our times of pain, our problems, and the people that we face, in the time of pandemic, God has opened a door for us. There is an open door. What should be our most immediate response is to worship God. I know that some of us here, you are waiting for this pandemic to be over. Some of us are watching. We are observing. Others, you are wrestling. Still others, you are worried. The best response, the ultimate response, each one of us, all of us here in this room, we are to come to God and worship Him. Don't wait. Don't worry. Don't wrestle. Come to a place of worshipping God. There are so many things that we worship. We worship people. We worship ourselves. We adore ourselves. We worship things. We worship money. We worship so many things. But there is one thing or one person that we should be worshipping and who deserve all our worship. Our attention simply, simply means all our affection adoration and that is God himself in other words the angel is reminding us don't worship heaven don't worship the door don't worship what is behind the door but worship God the person who has the keys of David the person who can unlock this door for you come to him can you imagine John who is in heaven would make that mistake, that blunder to worship an angel? What more for you and I here on earth? It's so easy to get distracted, to be looking away and looking at something else or someone else for a solution, to look for something else and someone else to unlock that door for us. But ultimately, it is He, God Himself, who can help us. When we talk about worship, we have all sorts of ideas in regards to worship, isn't it? Uh, let me read from 
the book of Psalm, chapter 27, verse 4, a very beautiful way to depict and to describe and obviously to define what worship is. Psalm 27, verse 4, the psalmist David said, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. I love the word, to gaze. We began the reading of Scripture a while ago with the word, to gaze as well. Gazing in heaven. Here, the David, the psalmist said, I gaze upon the beauty of God. Worship is gazing upon God. The psalmist did not say, I gaze upon the Lord, but I gaze upon the beauty of God. Of God. I remember it was in 1989. I was in that church for the very first time. It's a huge auditorium. And I was seated four empty seats away from a girl. And the moment I was seated there, I was so attracted by her. I was so attracted. I was gazing at her intently, carefully, curiously, in fact. <laughs> I was gazing at her. My full attention and affection was on this person that I've never met before. I was gazing at her because her beauty distracted me from the service in church. Her beauty. I was gazing not just at the person, but her beauty. And here, David said, I gaze upon the beauty of God. Not only I saw God, but I saw the beauty of God. You see, to see someone is to encounter that person, isn't it? But to see the beauty of someone is to enjoy that person. And I was gazing at her. Not only I encountered this person for the first time, I was just enjoying looking at her. We all love to look at beautiful things, isn't it? And beautiful people. They catch our attention. We fix, we glue our eyes on that thing, that object that is beautiful of that person. And here, David said, I gaze upon the beauty of God. I look at God steadily, intently, giving my full attention, affection, and adoration. And this is what worship is. Worship is more than just attending a church or attending a worship service. Worship is coming to adore Him, to enjoy Him. Worship is not just encountering God. Worship is enjoying God and then experiencing Him. Because it is a relationship. It is an enjoyable, enjoyable relationship. Do you know, friends, God enjoys you so much? He enjoys looking at you. If you are a parent, Today, just like I do, I enjoy looking at my children, just staring at them. Now that my children, they are, they are adults, still I enjoy looking at them. And your father, God himself, enjoyed looking at you. He is looking at you right now, not with anger, not, not with eyes to keep watch on you. But he is looking at you because he, is, he loves you. And He wants to be intimate with you. The one who can open that door today is inviting you and I to come to Him. And He said, I love you. I enjoy you. And our response to Him right now is to worship Him. To say, God, I want to encounter you. God, I want to enjoy you too. The story of Mary and Martha. Martha was busy with many things, but one thing, Mary had that will never be taken away from her, the scripture says. And that was to sit at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because she enjoyed not sitting, but she enjoyed sitting at the feet of Jesus. When was the last time you enjoyed being with God? I'm not asking when was the last time you attend church or attend a Bible study or attend worship service. No, no. I'm asking, when was the last time you enjoyed being in God's presence. Just, you just want to be there and just want to be with Him. 
I enjoy God's goodness. I enjoy God's graciousness, His greatness. I enjoy God's generosity. I enjoy Him for who He is because He enjoys me. And this is what the greatest commandment is all about, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You cannot love someone that you don't enjoy being with that person. Worship is a vision of a person, and that person is God. It is not just to encounter the power of God or to experience the power of God, but the person of God. It is not limited to a particular place, but it is pointing us to a particular person that is God Himself. The focus is never on the practice or the place where we worship, but it's all about the presence of God, the person of God. Worship is not an outward ritual, but it is an inward reality. It is from within. It is not external. And therefore, never mind what worship style that we, that we do in church or at home or online. The worship style is not the most important thing, but it is the lifestyle with God, our Father. Today, we talk about an open door. The one who can open that door for you, the relational door, the provision door, the door to health, the door to peace, the door to the things that you need, is that one person, and that is God Himself. God has opened the door for you, but you must call that locksmith. That locksmith is Jesus Christ. And enter into a relationship with Him. He brings and gives tremendous peace. If you have never called upon this locksmith and the door in front of you is locked, you try to knock down that door, you knock at that door, you try all the keys you could try, you try the keys of money, the keys of power, the keys of influence, the keys of manipulation, the keys of deception, the keys, all kinds of keys, and still that door is not open. Health is not coming. Peace is not coming yet. Why don't you call Jesus? He can make a key even without the original. I invite you to pray this prayer with me and invite Jesus to unlock the door of your heart and to allow heaven to be opened above you and heaven to come on earth into your homes, your workplace, your neighborhood. To experience heaven on earth, not the day after you die, but today. Because I've always said this, salvation is not only, salvation is heaven in me today and then me in heaven tomorrow. Can I invite you to pray with me? Say with me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. My door is locked. I am being locked out of my house, the house of provision, the house of protection, the house of perfection. And today I invite Jesus to come to first unlock the door of my heart. I invite Jesus to be the Savior and the Lord of my life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for enjoying me. Today I worship you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with me, I want you to know that you are a child of God. It's as simple as that. With a step of faith, you believe, you shall receive. God bless you.